Hello everyone! Today I will be talking about the latest panel from Hell that just finished a couple hours ago. Just a disclaimer, I want to start by saying that no matter my opinion on the showcase, I absolutely adore Larian Studios and Baldur's Gate 3 and I am pretty convinced that it remains my game of the year. They showed enough stuff today to make me crazy hyped for the full release and I loved watching it with you guys on my Twitch channel and I can't wait to put out even more guides for every one of you. There are however some stuff that I wanted to address and also what I was waiting for in the showcase that perhaps didn't exactly happen like I envisioned. So I hope you won't stake me for my opinion and enjoy the content. The first piece of information we got is the confirmation that the game now comes out on August the 3rd, as most of you probably already know. But from what I understood, they also mentioned that because of this early release date, the three day early access won't be coming, as instead of three days, we technically got a whole month, which is understandable. However, I was hoping that we get those juicy three days early to be able to start playing on July 31st. I'm not sure if this is still the case or not, but I am crossing fingers that it still is. Then then we got into character customization which took quite a while. I'm also not sure if body size is confirmed. I think there will be a slider for it but some people are disappointed that there will be possibly only two different main body types to choose from. Dragonborn however in my opinion look awesome although I also heard some people are disappointed that despite having amazing facial features it looks a bit too much like a human with dragon heads and while the heads are amazing the body leaves a bit to be desired for some people. They went through a lot of customization options as I said I'm not sure if body sliders are confirmed but I think they are coming and also they showed the different horns that the tieflings for example can get and a bunch of a plethora of different effects that that your character is gonna have on character creation I like the character creation overall although the UI in my opinion does look a lot like um, a console UI which obviously has to be a little bit because well the game releases also on console so I was a fan of the previous uh, character creation to be honest a little bit more when it came to like the where every thing was like uh, placed on the character creation I like it a lot maybe it's because I just got used to it so much so you know change can be good and I think it's it does showcase a lot of cool new details and a lot of new head shapes everything like how your character is gonna gonna look you can uh, pre pre look it a little bit more as to say I guess like you can see how your character gonna look in different angles they also showcase the classes like what the different classes do so for uh, beginners you can uh, see that for example a bard says obviously he instrument that he summons some magic so you can get uh, into the character more and know what you're getting yourself into while picking the class. Speaking of classes they confirmed that respec will be available in the game which means you can respecialize your character all over again so it will take you back all the way to level one and you can put levels in whatever you want from the beginning. However I am not sure if it also means that you will be able to pick your starting class again for example if you start as a paladin will you be able to be a ranger now which would have some implications in the world like because people already know you as a, as a paladin suddenly you're gonna be a ranger will people react to that so I am not sure if you will be able to change your main class or will it just push you back to level one as the class you picked on the character creation and then you can uh, place your levels in whatever you want again some people not me however I actually don't mind respec are a bit disappointed that this feature is in the game because it takes away from the fantasy aspects of D&D &D, of your character that you created that you went on the journey with and then suddenly you can change everything about it well it is a video game so it's a bit different from tabletop and I actually like to have the respec option because I like to try all the different builds it's also gonna make it easier for me to make builds for you guys on my youtube channel because well I'm gonna just be able to respect my character that's max level or whatever back to level one and gonna be able to do all the different builds gonna be able to show you guys all the different uh, traits and feats that I'm gonna pick so that's actually an awesome thing to have right away in the game they also confirmed that there will be more reactivity based on the class uh, and uh, race that you picked on character creation and the world gonna react to you of course so if for example you're gonna pick a, an obscure class combination with your race like I don't know a drow paladin maybe like an evil love paladin then the world gonna react differently to you because this is something unusual to see in the world so that's awesome that you're gonna be well more reactive in the world so all of that was pretty cool however I have my little tiny bit of disappointment in me because I wish they showed a little bit of the races mechanically like did they change the attributes of the races at all for example in D&D &D 5th edition now 
now you are able to uh, change your primary attribute of the race to something else. For example, Hathels are not locked into a permanent plus two charisma. You can actually uh, change the score to something else if you want. So it provides more variety. There is also no variant human. So humans are still a bit underpowered, I guess, because they get only plus one to all abilities and other races most of the time get plus one plus, uh, sorry, plus two plus one or even plus two and plus one and plus one with different uh, attribute scores. So that is, of course, pretty good to have. And I am not sure if they're going to change it yet, if they just didn't show us uh, show it to us yes, yet. Maybe there will be another community update that will uh, address this feature. They also showed no new spells from what I believe in at all. And I know there are like over 600 coming. We got a bunch of revealed of them in, in the community update uh, recently. But still, I would love to see, for example, the shield spell or the green, green flame blade, because those are really important for some builds and I didn't see any of them. They also spent quite a bit of time explaining the origin characters and what they are. So for example, if you don't already know, it's that you can play as a Starion right away or Shadowheart or one of the uh, seven, I believe, available custom uh, characters that Larian created. It's a feature that was taken from Divinity Original Sin 2 when you can just uh, play as that, this uh, pre-customed uh, character that uh, obviously has their own story. But from what I know, most people actually want to play as your own because, well, it's your story and you want to somehow get inserted into it. There was also little additional information about multi-classing feature other than that that it is confirmed. They also, however, confirmed that some subclasses, similarly to the Oathkeeper, will be locked between some uh, checks that are in the world. So you won't be able to, for example, I don't know, maybe play a Storm Sorcerer because uh, lightning gonna have to hit you first in order to become one. Of course, I'm just split balling, but I guess some subclasses they want to lock between uh, an event that's gonna happen in the game. And also they introduced the final origin character, which is Dark Urge, and it is a quite uh, a different take on the origin character because it is an avatar, so to speak, which means I think he won't appear in the game. You can just either play as him or he just doesn't appear at all. His story might revolve around the Dead Free from the Baldur's Gate series, and he might even be a ball spawn possibly. That's, that's, that's the vibe I got from him, but of course it doesn't have to be. So if it is a self-insert, it would be weird if, if it's just the avatar that you can pick, and if you don't pick him, he doesn't exist in the world at all. And, but it is a very interesting character. It's not something for me, maybe for a future uh, future a playthrough for sure, but on my first one, you know, I want to create my own character. But it is something interesting they did, that, that this uh, guy will not, or girl, you can create anything you want with him, it won't be in the game at all. So yes, you can customize him however you want. The canon, let's say, appearance of him is a dragonborn, a white dragonborn, but you can make him whatever race uh, you want and whatever class as well. Oh boy, and then they spent what I felt like half of the panel about romances. Some of you guys probably liked it a lot. I like them too. I'm not saying I don't like romances in, in games. I think they are great. I think in Baldur's Gate 2, my, the Viconia uh, romance was, in my opinion, one of the best told in, in video game history. So, so I do like romances, uh, but just it was such a big focus for such a long time in the panel that sometimes I just felt like, okay, can we get to the mechanics? Can we get to the gameplay? Can we get to the monk? You know, I want to see all the stuff. And we got like some baron human action, of course, that uh, obviously, uh, not obviously, but supposedly got them banned from TikTok, so they went pretty far. They uh, showcased some uh, date with, um, what's her name? Um, Karlak in, in some restaurant, which was actually pretty funny. Uh, and, and yeah, they just showed it a lot. There was a lot of technical issues during this uh, panel as well, which is understandable. It happens. I have technical issues all the time, so I can completely sympathize. But yeah, that's uh, part of the of the panel felt like uh, taking forever. It felt like it was taking forever. It's not exactly something for me to explore all the, all the different options of romance things that you can have. That's not why I mainly play RPGs. I want to play out my uh, fantasy, but not in bed. I want to play, uh, you know, just, just with my character uh, that goes through the world, explores, be a hero or a villain. You know the, the stick and uh, the shtick and everything about it. So, so yeah, so, so spending so much time on romance was not something for me, but I'm, of course, glad for the people that enjoyed it and glad that it's in the game, that it's a lot of options on, on future, uh, future playthroughs. You, you can uh, pick a different romance option. Almost everyone is romanceable. I do hope that a couple uh, characters like Minsk won't be um, romanceable because that would just be a bit weird to me as a Baldur's Gate veteran and stuff. I just I just don't want to see that stuff personally. It would be ingrained in my mind. Already too much things from the romances is ingrained in my mind after the panel from Hell, so I don't want to see stuff like that again. 
but you know, whatever floats your boat, I guess. But then we come to the city of Baldur's Gate, which in my opinion looks great, and also I love the little gazette feature, which means that you can uh, see uh, your uh, things that you did in the world in the Baldurian gazette, which is just awesome because there are some images, there are some headlines, that was very flavorful and really awesome. And then we finally got into the monk, which I think they actually showed the most from when it comes to like the technical aspect of the game, because they showed also the tactician difficulty, which uh, they failed because they got killed right away by goblins, because they stood in fire, they stood in flaming barrels, it was awesome. And it also showcased that the game will be probably pretty hard on tactician, which is awesome. I, I love hard RPGs, so that is great. And I also love how they showcased the monk, that they showcased different abilities, I believe it was uh, Flurry of Blows, and, and other stuff, so so it was really great to see monks in action. We got some Shadow Monks action with the with the darkness spell and stuff, so I love that. That's, that's what I love the most about those showcases. I want to see the mechanical aspects, the, the spells, the new spells, uh, new feats, new stuff that's that's happening in the actual game, so that was awesome. And they also confirmed split screen, which is great because you can play with your friends now, you can play on the couch, sometimes you just want to relax, you know, sit far from the computer and, and just, and just or your console and just uh, co-op with a buddy, so that is just awesome. I love split, split screen and I think Larian implements them greatly for an RPG, so that is just great. And then they went to their cinematics team, which explained uh, what thought went through their head while designing all the different cutscenes, the dialogues uh, between the characters, of course we know the game's gonna be huge, so that is awesome, I love how much work they put into it, the huge world that's gonna surround us, this is just great, I believe they confirmed again that uh, the dialogues it put together will have like uh, more text than uh, F Game of Thrones times 3 or something like that, I probably misremember, but, but you know the uh, what I mean. And then we finally got into the showcase of Act 2, which was quite spoilery in my opinion, it wasn't a big deal, we got to see Jahira, we got to see uh, that other dude, the Flaming Fist guy I believe, so so we saw a lot of gameplay day there to be honest with you, it was so much gameplay that I kind of looked away a couple times because I didn't want to get spoiled, I, I want to actually go through it myself, but of course I know why they did it and it was awesome, we saw the Drider spoiler alert, so he was great, I, I love this lore of Underdark and everything, so, so that was super cool to see, they also showcased the, the evil path and the good path, I guess, with the harpers and the um, goblins and and drows and and this evil dude that the name I forget uh, forget about the, the the old guy that's immortal. Sorry, another spoiler. Well, we already know if you watch the, the, the showcase that, that there was a bunch of spoilers, but of course we still have plenty of game to go through. We don't know the intricates of, of the politics, everything that's going on in Act Two. So I'm looking forward to it. And again, I am super hyped for the game. I just wish they showed more mechanical aspects of the game. That they showed more spells and more multi-classing, I was uh, hoping that they will show a multi class character and, and show maybe some abilities, how, how you're gonna actually multi-class for sure, so we can brainstorm until the game comes out, so I can do more guides for you guys, so I'm sure that I'm gonna make uh, excellent guides for you, so so you can pick, uh, you know, the, the classes and everything, how it's gonna work, now I'm still gonna have to uh, borrow my knowledge from the D&D edition of 5th edition, 5th uh, edition D&D, because, well, we still don't know uh, how exactly everything's gonna be implemented, I'm not saying that they should have spoiled everything and every class, and every ability, so I know everything, so we know everything right away, but you know, it would be nice to know how exactly you're gonna multi-class, and a bunch of other uh, technical stuff. I wish more spells were confirmed, maybe showcase some new feats, stuff like that. So there was very little technical uh, things shown when it comes to like the mechanics of the game. That's the right word. They showed a lot of cinematics, a lot of exciting stuff. And I'm not saying the panel was bad. I loved it. Uh, once again, I love Larian Studios. I think they are great guys and girls that just uh, make awesome games and they're very passionate about it. So I overall, I love the atmosphere. I love the team of it. And I think it was awesome. And I still think that of course Baldur's Gate 3 will be an insanely great awesome amazing game and it will be my game of the year most likely I don't know what can dethrone it so 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 I just wished I got more information because that's the kind of a person I am but I still loved the showcase and I enjoyed watching it with you guys on my Twitch channel so again thank you very much for watching this video I hope you enjoyed it and that you enjoyed the panel from hell because in the end I enjoyed it a lot as well I just wish there was a couple more technical uh, things and mechanics but whatever, the game is coming out soon anyway and we're gonna dive into it and I'm gonna make guides for uh, you, every single one of you, every day and I hope you're gonna enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching my videos, for every like, for every subscriptions. We are nearing a thousand subscribers, so just thank you very much. Maybe I'll even be able to, well, do this full time one day, who knows, because your guys' support has just been amazing and I thank every single one of you and I'll see you again very soon. <laughs>